What is up guys, it's Vern, back here again with another Super Gurge video, and oh my goodness, what a week to remember. It's actually been the week from hell, if not the season from hell. This is just a nightmare of a super coach journey. Oh my goodness. It's meant to be the round 18 review, but it's just... Oh, oh sorry, round 19. It's just, it's just been such a mess. It's been so hard. It's been such a rough season. Everything just seems to keep going from bad to worse. And this is disgusting. This score is unbelievable. Backwards 5,000 places. That is... Oh. I'll be honest, I've been pretty pissed about this all day. It is awful. I'd like to first of all apologize to all of you guys that have you know, come to my channel, actually liked, subscribed, and followed this absolute train wreck of a super coach journey throughout the season. I was really hyped coming into the season, you know, we... Finished last year 313. We did NBL Supercoach, finished ranked 23. We were feeling super hyped coming in, and it just. I just couldn't be more annoyed at it. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this. I at least thought some of my draft leagues were going alright, but even they've started turning to shit, and just. I just want to yell. I just want to scream at this. I cannot believe the season we've had this is the worst season i've had in the longest of times like i think even before i started playing for overall like when i used to just play for leagues i still think i had better rank than what i have right now like this probably the worst probably finishing rank i'm gonna have in like the last five years like at least within the last five like i've probably only been playing this game for like seven or so years and i would say it's Definitely a bottom three year, if not, like, bottom two. Like, this is unbelievable how bad it's been. And I just couldn't be more frustrated at it. Um, but we're just going to jump into the team. That's right. So I guess you guys want to actually hear the score for anyone listening, I guess, audio-wise. We dropped a 21-31. This could have been sub-2100, if not for one fact. And I'll show you what it was when we jump into the team, but... Season rank is now 27,038. Went down 5,200 spots. Just... <sighs> I need to take deep breaths. Deep breaths because... I am just... Whew. All right, let's 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 jump into the team. Let's see what I did. So I actually traded McGovern this week. And that might look so dumb. And in reality, it is super dumb. The only reason I even traded McGovern for Nass. Well, I would have loved to have traded him for... I mean, Ed Richards would have been a great one. Stuart would have been a great one. I, I personally wanted Sinclair, but we knew I didn't have the extra 100k to get Sinclair, so I decided to go to Nass with the good Marvel run, and the only reason I even made this trade is I was in a position in my cash league where I'm versing second last on the table. I need this win to basically stay ninth and stay with the pack and even have a chance of making top eight. Um, that's right, you can actually see a trade's been made. I mean, it's no surprise. We will get to the sexy man later on. I don't even care if you guys saw it there. But I had to do something. If I was stuck fielding a Caulfield... I mean, last week he dropped 30 on my field, 34. If he drops, like, another 50 to 30, that could be the difference maker. It's like, I'm the only, like he's not running any rookies, and I'm running Caulfield. Um, so that was just absolutely devastating. I, I couldn't believe it. So... I, I ended up making the move that I'm like, fuck it. It sucks that I have to do this. But if I don't move McGovern to Ness, I could lose to second last and my cash league hopes are dead with it. Fun fact, it didn't fucking matter. It didn't matter. My team sucked so hard. The only people I beat were the people that stopped at the start of the season. Like Anyone still playing the game actually just outscored me this week. That's how fucking bad it was. Like, I can't believe this. So we, we traded in Nass. Yeah, it got an extra, like, 28 points. Didn't make a difference at the end of the day. Um, I actually was considering dialing over Anderson because I was like, I even I even said it to my um, fiancé's younger brother. I'm like, bro, Anderson's going to get tagged to, like, a 40. But I just, that subconscious thing where, like, you know it's going to happen. You even call it in advance. But you just think, like, it's the subconscious thing of, I can't put a rookie on field for a premium. I can't do that. 
And what happens if he doesn't get tagged? I mean, man, still got 27 touches. Doesn't get tagged or use it a bit more efficiently and he's easily pushing 100. It, anyway, I, I, I made the play to keep Anderson on field. I mean, just look at this team. Look at those scores. Let's just go through the awful scores. So Nass ended up with 81, which just wasn't good enough, honestly. This was meant to be a great matchup for defenders at Marvel against the team that gives up the most points to attacking defenders. I mean, Sinclair showed it. He dropped a 140. And Nass gets a goddamn 80. Holmes, playing in the wet, 71. I'm not too surprised because he's playing in the wet and that's not really his strength. It's a bit more of a strength of contested users, not um smooth criminals like Holmes is. So I was very annoying. But as the great news here is we had the VC, so so many people got stuck with an 89 and I was like, let's go. We're going to get some points in the competition. I really need this. And then we captained fucking Dunkley for 69. We lost 20 points on the button, but as captain is. What the fuck is that, bro? Are you serious? I'm so sorry I'm swearing so much. I just, I'm... 89 from Butters. And of course, in my cash lead, the guy doesn't even have Butters. Dunks, 69, which is painful enough, but also as the captain? Bro, are you kidding me? I was once again in this situation where I'm tossing up Dunkley versus Zorko, and I thought about it. I thought last time, I had Dunkley versus Zorko. I went Zorko because I went Zorko at the Gabba. Didn't matter who the opponent was, I went Zorko at the Gabba. Seems like a safe option. I should have picked the informed Dunkley. This time I thought I should have picked the informed Dunkley last time. Zorko's out of form, so I'll pick the informed Dunkley this time. And what have he drops a fucking 69 as my captain. And Zorko gets a 129. Doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. That's just how shit my week was. But like, what a cherry on fucking top that was. Uniaki at 97, whatever. I mean, cool. I get it. Anderson, 59, bro. Oh, I'm not surprised. He's been fine. He's had his real up and downs. He got tagged in an away game. Like, it is what it is. But <sighs> green, steel, mm, take a bow. Well done. Well done, fellas. We needed that. Dawson, 80 fucking one. Bro, I could have filled a dailing over him. Like, <sighs> born in the big nank last week. Still. Didn't really do it for me last week, and that's okay. He'll bounce back this week. He concussed on 58. Are you kidding me, bro? What? 50. 58, bro. Oh. And probably my best performing line. Mm, best performing line, that's an overstatement. But let's just jump down. Heaney 72. It's not a big problem because everyone on him. Mason Wood bounces back, and I said he would. I still tipped Mason Wood for a great finish to the year. So that was cool, but he did go three goals for. Really left the 140 begging. Very, very annoying in that sense. Reed 80. That is frustrating. Last time he had more than 80 at halftime against St. Kilda, and then got tagged by um, Wind Hager, who wasn't even playing this game. So. And then. I guess the only thing I did right, Sexton for 60. I put the emergency on Sexton. He didn't look like he was going to get it. Got a goal. A very nice goal, I'll add. He didn't have the role. He played forward. It was kind of disgusting. Got to 60, and I went, you know what? That's probably better than what Kruger's going to get. And then Kruger got knocked down 24, and lucky. He could have had an early goal for us, too. I mean, let, let's top it off as well. Like, Kruger misses that early goal. Kind of good, because I didn't have him on the field. But, like, holy shit, did the pie suck this weekend. Oh, my God. God, we look like a shell of our former self. It is... It was a rough fucking weekend for Supercoach, for footy, just just for it all. Like, god damn. This sucked so hard. And like, the, the top off the end of the week, players like Dono and like Sheasel that I've been anti-potting, when he lost that defender role, we were like, hey, this is fine. Like, Sheasel's playing on the midfield, he'll probably drop in points, maybe he'll go 95 to 100, and that will be fine for some people, but it'll be something we can catch up on for the rest of the season. Fucking no, he takes it to the next goddamn level, and he keeps punishing me week out. Week after week. One thing I know for certain is if Sheasel isn't a mid-only for next season, he is the goddamn first pick player of my team. I do not give a damn. I don't give a damn if you got a goddamn Ruck DPP for some fucking reason. He's the first picked in my team. Like, 
mid only, debatable. You know, there's a lot of really good mids. But if he ends up with this forward DPP, he's got to be first pick next season. Like, oh my god. And if he ends up with mid only, then he's still even a talking point. That's just how good he is. God damn it. So yeah, that was my week, guys. Basically got knocked out of the running for my cash league. Had the worst score I have seen in a long time. And just got shit on by every fucking angle. Like, the only positive here is Dunks wasn't my lowest scoring player. He was my third lowest scoring player. So, I mean, technically it could have been worse. Technically. <sighs> but yep, yeah, that is my week, guys. You, I'm sure you guys probably didn't want to just tune in and hear me bitch and moan, but that's that's it. That's all I've got. Like, the season's so dead for me, it's unbelievable. The, the, the fun thing about playing all these uniques was against Scobes this week, in my head head we had 11 uniques, and I'm like, dude, that's sick. Like, that's something you don't see at this point in the season, and it's probably going to be a very competitive game. Nah, he ended up shitting on me by, like, 100 points, and he had a down week. Like, this is just... That's the only problem with, I guess, me having so many uniques is... For some reason, all of them miss. I'm the only one feeling that. I'm the only one feeling Holmes. I'm the only one feeling uh, Anderson. I'm probably the only one that fucking Captain Dunkley, for God's sakes. Oh my God. Like, Sexton, Reed. And this is something I've got to definitely look at and work on in the future. The last three seasons, including this one, I've put myself in a position where I have been stuck with a very speculative 22nd player. Um, two years ago, it was Pat Lipinski. Held them all season. Started off good. Wasn't great. Wasn't the worst forward option, but definitely wasn't a good forward option. And got stuck with him at F6. Technically, I had 23 players. I think someone got injured at the end of the year, though, so I ended up having to feel Pat Lipinski for, for like the last few weeks. Last season, same thing happens. Dacos gets in injured, so even though I had 23, I got stuck in this situation where I had to sort of yin-yang them a bit. It was Will Day, Sheasel, who was actually really good, and then Keys, who was a bit more of the speculative pick. Um, someone that you got for a bit of cash and then actually didn't end too well. And look, those two seasons... Pat Lipinski I, I ended up about 6k. It wasn't great. Last season ended up about 300. So, I mean, it, it worked. It worked. But this season, I've ended up with Sexton. And I just need to work on actually getting a good 22. I think I blow too many trades. Once again, this season starts 40 trades. We think there's so many trades. I can just throw them against the wall until something sticks. And nothing was sticking. So I just kept throwing them. And I ran out of trades. I've run out of trades. And I haven't really got a full premium team. Like, it just... I don't have... Any extra premiums? I know people like with 24 premiums. I'm stuck over here with 22 and not even 22 good ones. It's just... I really need to look at this for next year and be like, hold my horses, hold my trades, hold my boosts. That's what I... I mean, that's definitely what I did last year. People were using boosts early and I held up onto them. And I had four boosts when we got to upgrade season. I used all four to upgrade and I probably got there a week earlier, if not two, than other people, and I just ran home. I ended up with 23. And this year, I just, I, I know I can't compare the two, but this year, I burned like three boosts before upgrade season even hit. Upgrade season hit, and then I only had the two boosts to use, and it was, it was too slow. And there was too many sidewards, and I just, it's good learning for next year. Jesus, it is frustrating for this moment. Uh, now, the only thing I'm thinking here is I've got one trade left. Like, it's two annoying things here. I've got one trade left. Sexton's even a questionable, is he playing? Like, is he best 22? Like, it sucks if he goes 60 for the rest of the year, but, you know, if assuming F9, sorry, F6 for most people is going 90, it's 30 points I lose. Technically, if I was to use this one trade and then say English got injured for the rest of the year and I had the field Kruger over English... Kruger can average 50, and someone's got a Gorn there getting 110. That's 60 points I could be giving up a week. So we could play with the hypothetical game that if something happens in a more crucial line, without this trade, it's going to cost me more points than just holding Sexton. But at the same time, like, it's fucking Sexton, and he sucks, and if I move him now... I can at least get someone like a Colonel, which I know people are probably a bit upset with over the last three weeks. He wasn't good for two of those weeks and then finally got it back together. But he is realistically in the Coleman race. Carlton are probably locking up top four. Their last two 
games are against West Coast and St. Kilda. They're easy kills. They've got top four locked up, and they probably just feed Kerno the ball and get him 10 goals in both of those games to give him the Coleman. That's probably a high chance that ha that happens, and I would like to be part of that Kerno train. So that's why I'm thinking Kerno over Sexton. Plus, it's a hypothetical. Say English does play the rest of the year, and obviously he's concussed this week, so for fuck's sakes. And our cover is Kruger, who's concussed this week, so we have no fucking cover. So we'll get a donut in the ruck line, unfortunately. Um, even if I brought in Jackson, it wouldn't do anything, because then I would just get a donut in the forward line. Um, unless Pink came back and I flipped him down, but it's just it's not fucking worth the hassle. I don't care. We're just going to hold Nank, cop a donut. Hopefully, if these two... I just got to assume they're going to hold up the rest of the year, hopefully. I can trade Sexton the Kerno, and maybe we get something good out of that. I don't know. Like, that's, that's all I can really do at this point, and that's what I will probably do. So let's just move Sexton to... I guess Kerno's pretty highly owned as well, I'm pretty sure. Only 16% of teams. Not as crazy as I thought it was, but let's just bring him on in. Let's just do it and run it on to the end. Um, I mean, technically we can run the emergency, but I don't have any cover even if he was to fail, so let's just put him on field. Why not? Uh, now let's look at VCs and Cs for the week. Um, yeah, Sheasel. Sure, you can go Sheasel if you want. I mean, the man's on fire. Why not? Carlton Port. I don't know if I'm going either person in that game. Um, De Koning obviously out for a few weeks here too. Oh, sorry, for the rest of the year. So really unfortunate for anyone that got on De Koning. That sucks. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go Anderson uh, in the derby against people first. Could get tagged by Jared Berry, but that's why I'm going to go the VC on him, because if he gets tagged, then it is what it is. And if he doesn't, then he probably goes 140, so we get a nice, easy VC score. Um, another one people are probably eyeing off, potentially Nick Martin into St. Kilda. That's also potentially one. But saying that, Martin's a bit more of a flexible man where he's not playing behind the ball 24-7. So usually it's defenders against St. Killer, but sometimes Nick Martin's going forward and kicking four goals. So I don't really know with him. I don't really know a Nicky boy. So I probably won't go there. I think if you have Zach Merritt, that's a great one to go, obviously. Um, and that would probably be my... Like most people, instead of Anderson, probably have Zach Merritt, and that's where I'd probably go with the VC. Um, then looking to finish this off, I mean, technically you have gone into Briggs. Briggs is a very loose, not like the opposite of restrictive, uh, unrestrictive, I guess. Ruckman, so Gorn could go really big on his debut game, coming back, pushing for finals. Um, Frio into West Coast. I don't know what could happen here. Derby games are so weird. Last time West Coast pumped them by 50. West Coast also give up a lot of points to attacking defenders. Jay Clark, I probably wouldn't go with the C. Ryan, I don't trust with the C right now. So wrong, I would be happy to go Sarong if I had Sarong. Um, and from West Coast point of view, um, Frio also give up a lot of points to defenders, so if you have a McGov, would never trust him with the C, but should have a good game. Uh, and then I guess Old Reliable here. We have Collingwood into Richmond. Richmond obviously battered and bru bruised, so I think I'm just going to lock in Nick Dacos as the C. Uh, I'm fortunate for Nank to miss this game. It is what it is. Um, but you know what? Collingwood really need the win, so we'll take it. And then Sydney into Western Bulldogs. Yeah, look, Sydney very restrictive. They just showed it this week against Dunkley and Neil. Uh, I mean, I don't even know from dogs. There's so many random dogs that pop up. I mean, Trelaw, Richards, uh, English, Bont. Any of them can go off on the right day. It's hard to say. Adelaide versus Hawthorne. Oh, God, if you have a world day, I mean, if you're feeling like a spicy C, there's a spicy C for you. Kind of like that. Kind of like that a lot as a spicy C. I love a bit of Will, Will Day. Um, but yeah, that is it for me, guys. I really appreciate all you for sticking... Uh, blah, blah, blah. I really appreciate all y'all for sticking around to the end of the video. For those that did, I'm sorry for my rambling, my ranting, my rage. I am just very frustrated at this season. And can't wait for it to end, because I'm already planning for the next. Um, I, most people started planning after, like, round five. I mean, I was a bit more delusional than them. thought I could actually do something. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, till then, peace, later.